Hi and welcome to British Ants. Uh, today we're going to be covering a year in the life of the Solenopsis Invicta. Uh, we skip by here from one to three months quite quickly um, because the colony didn't actually put on a lot of growth in the first few months. Um, and it wasn't until the third or fourth month that we then transferred the queen uh, from this small unit, which actually becomes the outworld, um, into a larger tank. Um, the tank was uh, originally planted um, with a plant called uh, Helexine, mind your own business. That's actually the name of the plant. Um, and as we transferred the, uh, the colony over, we can see there's a lot of brood there. Um, the colony was kept quite warm. And then we go on to month five, and then things start to get a little bit scary. Um, we get moments where the, uh, the, pl the plants that were in there have completely gone. Um, the ants have turned that soil all over. Um, they've buried the original piece of wood that was in there. And uh, they've removed all the plant matter um, completely now. Well, all by that small piece in the, the bottom right hand corner there. So for the next few months, we decide not to heat the colony, to uh, slow it down a bit. Um, we try and tail back a little bit on the protein, um, because obviously we're, we're providing a little bit too much heat and a bit too much protein, and the colony is actually growing uh, a little bit out of control um, at this stage. Um, so we go for the next three months uh, without a great deal of growth. Um, the colony kind of ticks over quite quietly, we don't get any problems from it. Um, and then along comes Christmas. So we thought uh, we'd give them a little sugar Santa. Um, just made of solid sugar, it's actually uh, really hard. Um, in the top left hand corner of that tank there you can see that the, um, the midden, uh, which is the place where the ants discard their uh, dead workers, basically the, uh, the graveyard. These species are quite annoying actually because they will take their dead um, and stick them to the um, anti-slip on the side of the outworld. Um, we usually attach a small 10 millimeter width piece of uh, tube to the hoover. We just hold the tubing over the end of the hoover and then we just suck those, um, those areas out. Uh, they seem to enjoy the crickets quite a lot. Uh, this is, I use the very small crickets uh, to feed these. The reason for that being, um, they don't leave legs and body parts laying around. They will actually consume the entire cricket, but they do eat uh, usually at about a tub a week. Uh, and they can get quite expensive at uh, nearly five pound a tub. So they all seem fairly um, sedate at the moment. It takes them uh, barely 20 seconds to subdue the crickets, drag those off. Uh, and if we speed this up, um, it's not a great deal there to see, to be honest with you. Uh, and then we go on to just after Christmas. So this is January. So we're just giving the uh, giving the colony a good poke to uh, to see how it's doing. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, how big the colony looks on the outside or how many are in the the outworld. It's not really until you start delving around in the colony you realise how large the colony is actually getting. Uh, and here we get to that kind of what I call boiling point where it's frothing with workers when you disturb the nest. Uh, in the wild, these these nests can contain a quarter of a million workers. Uh, which is quite daunting uh, and they can raise their mounds up from the ground by about 50 centimeters so they're certainly not to be messed with i think i read recently that about 80 people uh, have actually been killed by by fire ants over the course of the last 80 years that's one every 10 years this in uh, relation to most wild colonies would be considered fairly small but I would easily say there's seven to 10,000 workers, which is, uh, is about 3,000 more than I originally thought that were, was in this colony. So here we've created a kind of setup to transfer the ants to. 
um, whilst we sort their old form of carom out. We basically uh, want to clean out all the soil, check that the seals aren't going on the original tank because the uh, Solenopsis are escape artists and they will attack the sealant uh, of glass tanks. So um, I just wanted to transfer them over to this setup. We can refresh that soil that's in the main setup and remove that piece of wood um, from the colony that we've just seen. So this is a few days later after we've disturbed the nest. Um, they seem to have made uh, set up camp in the corner of the tank and piled the soil up slightly away from the, the piece of wood that's in the container. Again, there's not a lot of activity on the surface, um, so it is a case of turning it upside down to have a look underneath. So we're attaching the temporary kind of outworld nest. We've put some uh, red acetate around some tubes in there, it's a temporary setup. Uh, they will move in there because they uh, they don't see the, the red, so it uh, creates that dark environment they need. And hopefully they'll move over. So here we are, this is a few days after disturbing. And again, they've piled the soil up over the wood. So the average life of a queen is eight years, which is similar to that of uh, Lassius Niger, uh, which lasts seven years. Uh, and they can lay hundreds of eggs a day, which uh, is a lot, but it's certainly not as much as uh, the leafcutter ants, which can lay uh, 30,000 eggs a day. So that's an interesting little bit of information for you there. The, the queens can actually survive outside down to one Celsius. Um, and, and produce colonies, so you can see why they've become quite a thing uh, across the globe, uh, causing issues in pretty much most countries that they manage to uh, to dominate. So here we are, that's all set up now, so we've just got to wait for them to move in, and uh, hopefully that should be quite soon. And there's only one way that we're going to be able to move these. Uh, we've tried uh, heat, light, uh, drying the colony out, so we're only left with one option, and that's to uh, replicate their natural environment and uh, make it rain. So we're, we've constructed basically a very rudimentary bottle uh, with a hole in the top, which over the next few hours will drip water into the... Uh, nesting area and hopefully induce them to uh, take the tube uh, up to the prepared outworld with the test tubes in. So fingers crossed this works. This is not something I would recommend doing with any other species uh, of ant so don't do this if you don't have Solenopsis because uh, you will actually most probably kill your colony. Uh, the Solenopsis are a species that uh, originate from an area that is prone to flooding uh, and they're quite used to this behavior. Uh, so what they will do is grab the brood and the queen and take her to high ground. So over the course of the next few hours, uh, which we've speeded up, um, they will start to surface with the brood. Now we made a slight mistake on this one because here's a here's a view of what you're looking at but the the tube that leads to the outworld isn't at the highest point and the ants will naturally go to the highest point in the nest uh, which is what they do here but the highest point is actually the top of the wood so here we speeded it up And you can see as the drips increase into the tank the lot the activity becomes workers with brood. 
so they start running around at first and then you can see that they start to build up by bringing the, the brood to the surface. As we watch this uh, footage uh, of the ants moving their brood about, um, this little side note for you, that uh, between the years of 1957 and 1975, uh, America went to war on this species of ant, and uh, mostly this was down to uh, public hysteria. Uh, they ended up putting 182 million kilograms, that's a uh, kilogram is a bag of sugar in the UK. So 182 million kilograms of poison uh, was dropped from planes over millions of acres um, to kill the fire ants. But uh, unfortunately, it didn't just kill the fire ants. Uh, it did end up killing honeybees, birds, fish, cattle, and fire ants, uh, and all the native ants that were left. So it was... Uh, quite apocalyptic uh, and it was something that uh, A.E.O. Wilson uh, commented about. Unfortunately I can't repeat that because it's uh, not really a very PC comment to make anymore in the modern era but uh, he certainly had a few words to say about that. Um, it was a very odd thing to do really um, to drop that considerable amount of poison on the ground um, but it's what it did do is it left because it killed pretty much everything, it left no natural predators, uh, which means that in the period of 1957 and 1975, when they were dropping this poison, that by the end of that period, that Solenopsis had doubled its territory. So the poison had, uh, had actually bolstered uh, the ant's ability to dominate large areas. So the colony in front of us are slowly starting to work their way up the uh, acrylic tube which is uh, a bit of an oversight on this one but it seems to work quite well um, got a few scouts going up there they're just uh, working their way um, eventually they will go up there it's just going to take a bit of time uh, if you're worried about them drowning you don't have to do that because uh, in the wild when they get flooded out they will actually float for months at a time uh, before finding land, so they're they're quite used to a bit of uh, water. Doesn't uh, pose them too much of a problem. So here we have the colony all massing on the the highest point at this stage, which is the the wood, with the exception of the acrylic tube. And it does take uh, 24 hours for them to actually get a move on and start moving the brood up into the tank uh, that's been prepared with test tubes. So patience is the key on this one. We did work out that this is the quickest way. Uh, we did try drying the colony out, uh, adding light, but uh, they're quite persistent. And if you've ever tried to move Velasius niger from one tube to another, that can take months. So uh, we've cleaned the original unit out. Uh, it's had a good deep clean. Uh, we've removed all the uh, the parts so we're going to reapply the same parts. Uh, we drilled the holes with a cone drill bit. Uh, the tank we got from Pets at Home. It's quite a good tank and then we had the acrylic four millimeter lids cut that fit exactly. Uh, we have various lids um, some have holes in and some are completely sealed. Um, but with this, when we've attached all the parts, we'll be adding uh, a tube just to vent the top of the colony um, because they do produce a little bit of stink. So. It's also worth noting that the, the parts that we use, uh, we tend to use 20 millimeter uh, connections for pretty much everything. Uh, the reason for this being is that they're a standard format for plumbing, uh, which makes them very, very cheap. Um, as I've mentioned before in videos, that certain suppliers will create unusual fittings like 18 or 19 millimeter, um, or 37 millimeter is an, uh, another uh, supplier. Um, but then you're beholden to having to buy the connections 
um, from that supplier and only that supplier, which then means that they can charge you four or five times, or in the case of some of the 37 millimeter um, connections, you'll pay 10 to 12 times more. Um, and you really don't need it for a lot of these species. Um, this setup, pretty similar to what I'm doing now, I've used for leaf cutters. Um, the, the bolts that I'm just fixing are called M20s. Uh, and you can obtain these from um, YouTube for just a couple of quid, which is really good. And you can reuse them over and over again. Um, the tubing is our standard 10 millimeter. Uh, it doesn't need to be any more than that for um, such a small species. Um, but even leaf cutters can pass through that with waste material. So I always drill the holes in the tanks at 20 millimeter and then I can apply these M20 fittings and apply the tubing that I require for the species. So now it's time to uh, glove up. Um, as I'm sure you already know, this species not only bites, but they also sting uh, and they will give you quite a nasty uh, a nasty sting indeed. Uh, they don't call them fire ants or nothing. The odd bite, unless you're allergic obviously, uh, isn't too much of an issue. Um, but if you are allergic then you're going to be in trouble and you shouldn't really be keeping this species. It's got to be said that out of all the ants I've kept, these are high maintenance. Um, you, I mean, once they're set up in this uh, setup that we're now transferring them back to with clean soil, um, you can't really go a day without feeding them. Um, you've got to have a fairly warm temperature. I've kept this colony quite cool in the past, um, but if I was to go away for a week uh, and they weren't being fed, they're going to put all their energy um, into escaping. Uh, they haven't managed as yet, uh, a year on, to uh, bypass the uh, anti-slip that we use, so that's a good sign. Um, but with this species you've got to watch them um, because they are clever. They will uh, use things to create ladders, so they will use their dead and stick them to the anti-slip. Um, and if the sand was wet in the outworld they'd also stick that to the um, PTFE or the anti-slip to create a bridge that they can then climb over. So these ants are always one step ahead. When you've got a smaller colony it's never too much of a problem um, but they exponentially uh, grow so you can end up with 100 workers one day and then suddenly you'll look in the outworld and you'll see 400 workers and you think well, where the hell are these come from and then before you know it you've got a thousand and then four thousand I mean they really do grow at those rates um, but if you're starting off with a queen then the process is slow usually for the first few months so here we're connecting up the new tank so they're uh, free to roam in there any ants that are loose around the um, the setup from the tubes they can just be picked up with a brush and flicked back in there. So this is a setup. We've got the outworld set up, the feeding. Uh, that's the main unit now with the vent on top. Um, we've put some um, insulate along the top of the setup to keep it slightly warmer. Um, and is what that means is that you won't get condensation on the lid. You will get condensation down the sides of the glass um, but that will run straight down and back into the soil um, but it's large water droplets um, condensing that can kill a lot of small ants. With this species they produce so rapidly at this stage um, that a few being taken out is not an issue. So I've used a bit of the anti-slip in the vent tube to stop them climbing out the roof. And that's the uh, insula. I've put the piece of wood on a acrylic triangle to raise it up 
in the hope that the queen and the workers that are actually in that wood head down and into the soil. And then at a later date, when all the ants have migrated down, I can then remove that piece of wood because the whole point was to get rid of that wood. Uh, but unfortunately, there are so many ants in there. Um, here we've added um, the brood from the tubes into the outworld and we speed, uh, sped this up a little bit. And you can see that the, uh, the workers are collecting that brood up quite rapidly. This bit of footage is 20 minutes long. Um, that's been sped up, so that's, that's how long it takes them to remove a, a test tube full of brood. Uh, and this is the colony uh, a week later. Um, they've all settled in. Um, they've got quite a, a good foray going there. Um, taking dried mealyworms. Um, we use the proteins, um, the white protein, um, the yellow protein jellies. Um, they also get um, quite a bit of um, honey as well. So if you've enjoyed this video, um, we'd really appreciate it if you give it the thumbs up or thumbs down uh, and leave a comment below. Um, if you've got experience of this uh, species, uh, we'd also like to hear from you. Um, we are a community and we like people to get in touch. Um, and other people can obviously get in touch with you and follow your channels. Um, so please do leave a comment. And obviously it does well for us. Um, and it uh, spurs us on to make more videos. Um, as a final um, bit of information, um, they, the uh, Solidopsis in Victor have been uh, DNA tested uh, and it appears that uh, most of the ants that are uh, of this species that are in China, Australia and Taiwan have all come from South America originally through DNA testing. So I thought that was quite interesting. Uh, and if you were to take the, the pheromones that these ants use, and if you had a teaspoon of that pheromone, it would, apparently, I've got this idea that someone's actually uh, been sat there in a white lab coat and actually uh, tried to do this, but uh, apparently one teaspoon of the pheromones that they use, um, this is the same pheromones that they uh, basically talk to each other with um, and leave trails, signals, food markings, and the same pheromones that uh, tell the queen when to lay and when to move the colony. But if you took one teaspoon of that, it would go um, 120 million miles or 5,000 times around the globe, which I thought was pretty amazing. So yeah, some poor guy in a, a white lab coat's been going around the, uh, around the planet 5,000 times with a teaspoon. Um, but it shows you that the, these animals, which have, um, or these insects that have been around for 120 million years, certainly uh, they've certainly evolved. Um, so they will keep you on your toes. Um, as I'm sure you've worked out, these aren't a beginner species, um, and you really do need to dedicate a bit of time to a, a colony like this because they will constantly test you, and they do constantly demand food. Um, so if you run out, then uh, you're going to find yourself in a situation. Anyway, our next video that will be coming up, um, all being well, will be uh, Polyrachus illordata. And we'll be doing a short little video. That one will only be um, a couple of minutes long. Just giving you a bit of brief information about those. Showing you what, uh, what a queen looks like and some other little tips. But again, um, thanks for joining. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Um, please feel free to share the video. As I said, it does well for us um, and encourages us to uh, continue doing these videos. And uh, please leave a comment. Have a good day. Bye.